Red John is gone, or we think. What do you think he has in his mind about the whole Red John story? Um, what does he have in his mind? Uh, well, at the moment, there's a sort of a, a juggle going backwards and forwards as to whether Red John is dead or not dead, and, and he's uh, doing a little dance with how he reveals what he believes to be the truth. But the, the show itself, I guess, is a, we're playing around with a more of a, of a loose psychological um, uh, approach to the character. So he's, you're not necessarily sure when he's committing to the truth or when, when he's lying about what he believes. Okay. He's om he om Just a little bit more deceptive, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. With with what? The fact that he's almost get he's almost gonna get murdered and and he's become amnesic. Oh, amnesic. Amnesic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, I'm with you. <laughs> All right, um, sorry. That's my fault. I'm half asleep. I'll wake up. Um, he, uh, yeah, no, that's fun. I mean, you know, here's the thing: the, the character can be can go in a lot of different directions, and it's um, it often, you know, the writers on the show really swing very wide with different stories from episode to episode, which is challenging for me because I still always have to come back to the basic truth of the character and the tragic element of the character. But and in that episode, yeah, it's almost like playing a, it's almost like playing a different character. What's changed the most during the, the course of those four years? You or, or Jane, you think? I probably, um, yeah, that's an interesting question. Probably me. In which way? Well, I've, I'm older. <laughs> um, I don't know that I'm any wiser. Um, I'm tireder. No, I, I don't know. I, look, here's the thing with a series. It's, it's, it's sort of interesting because you have to, uh, generally you have to appear like you're moving forward with the story, but at the same time you don't want to move forward too quickly because um, you don't want the show to change too much. Uh, you have to tease certain things out, certain things you have to um, wrap up quickly. But most of the time, particularly with my character and my character's storyline, you have to um, tease out as much as you can. Mm -hmm. And I think there's more pleasure in that for, uh, for me and also for, for the audience. It, it's, that's such a hard question because it's, it varies. I mean, some people like, um, some people just r really love the character. Uh, some people love the, the sort of the humor in the show. Um, I, I've gotten a lot of compliments. I mean, it's sort of, I don't know what I'm going to do at the end of it because um, you get used to getting complimented all the time. It's a weird and dangerous place to go in. <laughs> the most obvious things that have probably changed me uh, are the, the birth of my children mm -hmm. and the death of good friends, both in profoundly positive ways, as perverse as that sounds. Thank you very much, Simon. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Okay, so you just celebrate the 100th episode of mm -hmm. The Mentalist. Um, was it an important step stone for you? Uh, no, just a number. Mm -hmm. Just a number. It, I understand the significance for uh, you know, a lot of people, and um, uh, it's a lot of episodes to do. Um, it's a lot of crimes to solve, etc. A lot of hours of work. I like the way we celebrated it with a with a, um, a retrospective episode that predates the the pilot. In fact, I thought that was interesting, and that was that was fun to do. So the finale for season four is going to be quite explosive. Uh, what do you think the outcome is going to be? Well, I know the outcome because I've already been. Uh, it takes the characters that we know and, and we've established and just reintroduces a whole new sort of structure of the story to it. Um, and I think it's the finale that introduces the Lorelei character. Uh, and, we, and we go from there. So I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed shooting that episode. Um, and I like the way it turned out. Patrick, do you really want to get to know me? Of course. Give the act a rest. What? I, I, I wasn't... Yes, you were. Okay. Well, I think what's interesting about the Lorelai character and the relationship with Lorelai and Jane is that there's an obvious need that Jane has 
and she holds information. Um, but mixed up in that, in that transaction is uh, the idea of intimacy and, and a frisson, a flirtation that happens between the two of them. And it just introduces a vulnerable element to the Jane character where um, as an audience we begin to wonder whether he feels anything for this woman uh, if that has actually gotten in the way of what his what his motive is which is to get information from her so it, it, it's a fine little uh, line to balance and it's and it becomes a nice dance I think it's gonna take a while I think the dynamic between Patrick, Jane, and Lorelai starts to become very blurred. I think it starts as a game, and it starts as a very manipulative game. And then I think they're both surprised at what the other could potentially mean to each other. There's always an unexpected moment. There was another one where we, my, my family and I had uh, lunch at a, at a very famous souffle restaurant. Mm -hmm in Paris and the, the chef took us back and my, my, showed my wife how to make a souffle and she then made a souffle. Any uh, plans for Christmas? Uh, yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to Australia. Australia. We uh, encountered, I mean, uh, your daughter, Charlotte, in one episode. Mm -hmm. How emotional was that? Uh, it, yeah, it was, um, it was a very, that episode it was a, had a very broad and interesting concept. Uh, the idea was a great idea, and I think I think it worked well. Um, yeah, it was it was it was emotional. I mean, it was a nice a nice way to look at the character through the eyes of his daughter, and 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 what that relationship could have possibly could ha could have possibly have been. How different was this experience this time around? Well, my decision to direct the show at all, and I started directing th um, three seasons ago uh, on the show was really about trying to keep um, the creative flame going for me and keep me expanding uh, and, and learning and and also to find an avenue to to put my own uh, take and my own ideas of the show um, into and uh, I, I really enjoy doing the processes. It's, it's challenging and uh, risky and all of those things, but in doing that I get to follow through from beginning to the end completely. So I, I, I'm very involved in the process, particularly on, uh, far more so on my episodes, from the, from the script and the inception of the script right through to, to the sound design and uh, the whole, I mean, pretty much every frame. There is a bit of nudity in this uh, episode. Mm -hmm. uh, was it uh, easy to, uh, for the, you know, to make that accept the producers, the network and everybody? Because I know it, in, in the United States it's not always an easy step to... Yeah, you can normally watch someone get their head blown off, but you can't see the side of someone's breast. And uh, it's absurd. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk, it's another conversation. <laughs> I knew that the Europeans would understand it. <laughs> I grew up in Australia. To, for a woman to be topless on the beach is it's a, yeah. natural. Right. <laughs> it's right. good. It's, right. it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing sordid or seedy about it. Um, no, I, I, I wrote that part into the script because I wanted to illustrate uh, the idea of uh, we established this character, this Lorelei character, someone that is sort of um, bad, evil, uh, bad intentions. Uh, selfish, etc. And then I wanted to contrast that by seeing her that as a sort of someone that still enjoyed the simple pleasures, simple beauty of things. And I thought the freedom of this woman swimming in the ocean after she's been in prison naked on her own, just for herself, for her own pleasure, not for anyone else, was a beautiful and innocent moment. It depends on, I think it depends on, um, well obviously it depends on how much the audience is willing to watch it for, how long they're willing to watch it for, but I think it really does depend with a show like this, how often you throw in um, different ideas and different styles of episodes to keep it fresh. 
it's, you know, my parents always used to sort of say to me, it was kind of instilled in me that, you know, that, um, it doesn't matter if you fail as long as you give it your best shot, you know, um, and only you really know the answer to that. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I guess that goes hand in hand with, the, you know, if you don't, if at first you don't succeed, then try, try again. So, um, that, that's it. They, they didn't really say it to me. They just instilled that into me is to not give up. Thank you very much. Thanks, so the list is down to seven suspects. Um, how equally um, each of those guys can be Rajon? Well, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, the idea is that uh, we've narrowed it down to seven so that now we at least give the audience um, something tangible to hang on to. And, and from there, it's a process of elimination. The most intriguing comment I've heard um, is that possibly uh, Lisbon is Red John. You know, I don't know, everyone has their different theories mm -hmm. of who Red John is and, and um, you know, some people have suggested that maybe Jane is Red John and he's just a sort of a, a you know, a psychopathic narcissist, uh, which I thought was kind of a good idea, but um, <laughs> be fun to play. But uh, no, that's not the case. So Owain and Amanda are leaving pretty soon. Uh, on, on the season six. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel about that? Uh, yeah, it's strange. It's sad. I mean, um, are we now talking about season six? That's okay, because they, they, know, they know about <laughs> that. You know, yeah, yeah. Oh, this this is confusing, it. yeah, but I know. Yeah, you know, most, of the, you know, most of the fans watch it on bit torrents anyway, which is annoying mm -hmm. and not great for uh, copyright reasons. It's piracy and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, we're sitting in a set that is a kind of a you know, it's already ahead of the curve mm -hmm. for where you guys are. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they, they're still shooting the show now, Owen and Amanda, and we're on to season, we're in season six and we're up to episode 12, so they don't go for a while. Um, but uh, the idea of them leaving is interesting. It's, uh, it's a strange feeling because we've been sort of a family for, for six years, five and a half years now, and um, um, yeah, it is a strange feeling. We have other actors coming in, and I know it's 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 refreshing and and um, kind of uh, sad in a nostalgic way as well. So the people in America knows who the bridge on here is. Um, not really my decision to make on who it is or who it isn't. Uh, I mean, to me, it, it, it the character of Red John represents something so strong and powerful within my within the character of Patrick Jane so um, it's not about which guy he is it's just about finding him you know so uh, there's always an element of, of you, know, you create this mythology around a character where he's uh, this uh, evil uh, arch nemesis that is playing games with you constantly for five and a half seasons but um, essentially there's always going to be a level of disappointment because it's just a person. Uh, so I, I, I never really focused on who Red John is. I've focused, I've always focused more on well, what happens when Jane is face to face with Red John. The unex most unexpected moment of 2013. Mm -hmm. okay. hopefully, hopefully something will come I'll, jump I'll into come mind. If any of you come up with anything, let me know. <laughs> there's so many moments, you know. I don't know. I can't give you one. I can't give you one. No problem. Then you don't have to speak French if you don't want to give me one moment. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Can you just say uh, for the, the readers, bonjour au lecteur, le télestar. Au lecteur, le télestar. Bonjour. Le télestar. Oui, le télestar. Le télestar. Voilà. Uh, you're going to have to hold up a cue card for me. <laughs> <laughs> bonjour. Bonjour what? Au lecteur. What's au lecteur? Lecteur, readers. Au lecteur. Lecteur, yeah. Readers. Oh, lecteur, not au lecteur. No, ah, o, it oh. means O A U X and then lecteur. It's o lecteur de Telestar. De Telestar. Voilà. Bonjour, au lecteur de Telestar. Voilà, that's good. Voilà. That's perfect. That's perfect. Au revoir. <laughs>